Good morning, Stryker, Pulaski, and Evansport United Methodist Churches, and anyone else who may be joining us this morning. I welcome you to Stryker United Methodist Church, and it feels good to be back behind one of my pulpits. Of course, it's odd not having all of you in front of me. Just a quick announcement for you before we begin this, this morning. Pastor Nico and I are working on Easter Sunday celebration. We are working through some things so that we're both understanding what we're doing and how we're doing it. So as soon as we know all of that, we will be communicating that through Facebook and emails and who knows what else because we are in a very virtual setting this season in life. So be on the lookout for more information about Easter coming. For this morning, our scripture passage comes from Joshua, chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. It reads, Now when Joshua's, Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord, Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals. For the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Over the last few weeks, I've been reminiscing and reflecting on the last year. It brings me to such a feeling of awe. There have been memories made, and I rejoice in those. And I rejoice in the fact that we are coming up on our one-year anniversary of this church partnership. I'm sure you've learned a lot about me as I have learned a lot about you. One of those things that you've probably learned is that I love music. And while I may have sang a little bit for my sermon last time, it was more of an icebreaker for this whole virtual worship. But this morning, there's a song that actually kind of pertains to the sermon. You see, in the Faith We Sing hymnal, here in our church, and maybe in a bunch of other churches, is a song called We Are Marching. It's about marching in the light of God. And we indeed are marching, marching, marching in the light of God this day and every day of our lives. And right now it might feel that the light is very far from us, but we just keep on marching, friends. It's what we do. The second thing you might have learned about me is that you never know when you'll find me without my shoes on, on any given Sunday morning. Sometimes it's because I have heels on, sometimes it's because I wore the wrong shoes to church and there was snow on the ground and my toes got very cold. Sometimes I don't wear my shoes because John Wesley preached barefoot in the fields you might not be surprised to find out that I'm not even wearing my shoes right now. It's just how I am. When I was an intern in the summer of 2014, I went around the offices one day barefoot, and when I got back to my desk, my shoes had been hidden. It was funny, I will give them that. But I may not have left my shoes unattended from then on. I'm just that kind of person. 
And you might wonder why I've been talking about bare feet. Well, because our scripture this morning tells that Joshua took off his sandals. He was told, or rather commanded, to take off his sandals for he was standing on holy ground. Joshua is not the only person that we find taking off his sandals. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 5, Moses was told to take off his sandals. Moses had found the burning bush. He was just looking for a sheep and found this strange thing. And he wasn't sure what to do until he heard, Here I am. Come no closer. Remove your sandals, for the place you're standing is holy ground. Just like Joshua, Moses was standing on holy ground. Moses went through the entire burning bush experience with bare feet, standing on holy ground. And when we find Joshua, he's come to Jericho. He has sent spies into the city. He's taken people across the Jordan River, and they're just kind of waiting on him. Joshua is not told by God necessarily, but by the commander of God's army. So I want you to pause here, friends, and if you're sitting in your living room, or your kitchen, or wherever you may be sitting or standing, take off your shoes if you're wearing them. Get up off the nice, comfortable chair or couch and feel the floor beneath your feet. Is it the cold tile of your kitchen? The smooth, cold, hardwood floor of your living room? Or maybe you feel the carpet underneath your feet. Whatever texture you are feeling, friends, you are standing on holy ground. You have invited God into your homes this day, and God is there with you. And where God is, holy ground is too. Joshua stood on dirt, and you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Joshua marched barefoot around Jericho each day. I would not be surprised if every time Joshua went to the Lord after being told to take off his sandals, he went barefoot. Have you ever considered what is holy ground? If you've considered it or not, have you ever thought about how special it is to invite Jesus into your homes? If you take time to pray in your living room, you have found holy ground. If you've taken time to read your Bible before bed, you have found holy ground. It is not just this church building or your own church building that is holy ground. We can find it outside the church too. I went searching for what others might say about holy ground. Oscar Wilde's thoughts are, where there is sorrow, there is holy ground. And a musician named Jason Gray, in speaking about grief and pain, says, I think it's important for us to recognize that pain is holy ground, and usually in the presence of holiness, it's best if we keep quiet. He is suggesting here that we not offer encouragement or words of hope to someone that might need them after telling us of their painful experiences. In a video telling the story behind the song, Not Right Now, Jason says he shared life with one of his friends, 
and just what was going on, and it wasn't that great. And his friend looked at him and said, Jason, I'm going to hug you now for two minutes. And that's just what he did. And Jason says he kind of laughed about it for a little bit before crying. Because what happened in that moment was Jason's friend provided unspoken comfort. It was all that Jason needed in that moment. But friends, pain and sorrow are not the only places where we find holy ground. We find holy ground in the joy of family dinner. Maybe parents find holy ground in hearing the soft snores of their children. Maybe even we find holy ground when we gently close our bedroom doors and kneel beside our bed and thank the good Lord Almighty for the love that he has given us that is everlasting. So think about Jericho for a moment. It was a city that God was giving to Joshua and his people. God made the land around Jericho holy, and it was all around, I'm sure. So if we had something that we just didn't like, that we could put in the walls of Jericho, what might we put in there? Maybe we feel like this coronavirus could go in the walls of Jericho and we could defeat it if we just walked around those walls. Although those walls were 13 feet tall. That's even taller than Goliath. Goliath was between seven and nine feet tall. David took Goliath down with one stone while Joshua and the Israelites were not able to take down Jericho with just one march. They marched around the city once a day for six days, and seven times on the seventh day. Joshua told his people, don't utter a word, don't shout, don't blow your trumpets until I tell you. They marched in silence. Have you ever done something silently? Have you taken a walk in nature and heard the soft, gentle breeze in the trees? I just did this the other day with my family. I went for a walk, and there was some tall grass that rustled, and my thoughts turned to creation. God created heaven and earth, gave us light and darkness, and called it day and night. He made water and land. He made fish and birds and other creatures. He made us humans, man and female, and he put us on earth to care for it. He gave his only son to the whole world for a time. And that son healed people, ate with sinners, broke bread with his disciples, and died for us. God is our wonderful creator, and the earth and each human are unique creations of his. If you put us all in a museum, there would be all kinds of topics to choose from. None would be the same, I'm sure. Even identical twins have their differences. You could play and spot the difference with some identical twins. In fact, Emily and I both wear glasses, except they're different. We have slightly different lengths of hair. We both wear a ring on our right hand. They have the same kind of stone, but they're completely different. Even our feet are different because I can wear a size 4 in girl shoes while Emily can't. There are differences in all of us. 
But here's the good news, friend. We are worshiping the same God. The same God that makes our ground holy. In a couple of weeks, we will celebrate Holy Week. And in that week, we will remember the Last Supper. We will celebrate and we will remember. The Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke all tell of the Last Supper. The Gospel of John, however, gives us a different story. John tells us not of what happened at the Last Supper, but what happened before the Passover festival. It's believed that the Last Supper was a Passover meal. And so before that, John tells us that Jesus gathered his disciples, knowing what was about to happen, and told them that he was going to wash their feet. He tells them that they are all the same, that a servant is not greater than their master, and a messenger is not greater than the one who sent him. Our God is the master, and the one who was sent was Jesus, and they're both great. But because of Jesus, we are all servants of God and messengers of his word. Our feet carry us around our communities to share Christ. Jesus told the disciples in John that whoever receives the one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. Today, friends, you have received God because others before you have received God. And now you share him with others, and they receive God. We're always planting the seeds. We may not see the flowers that bloom, and it might take a really long time for those seeds to grow. But God is always watering his garden. The beauty of hearing your colleague preach is building on his thoughts. Last week, Pastor Nico said, We are called to soak up God's love like a sponge and drip it. No, pour it out on everyone else out there. If we take that and if we stood where we felt closest to God and we soaked up his love, and then we just wrung it out on a little bit at a time wherever we needed to, how much of our world would be a little bit more holy? If we soaked up God's love and let some of it out while waiting in long lines at the grocery store, how much more bearable would it be to wait? If we soaked some of that love up and let some of it out at work, how much more patience would you have with your coworkers? There can be holy ground wherever you are. If you're a student and you hate taking tests, just remember that that desk can be your holy ground and no one else has to know. Take a moment and take a deep breath. Say a silent prayer for wisdom. And remember that God is with you, and do your best. If you're about to go into a meeting, maybe you're trying out Zoom for the first time, just take a deep breath and remember God is with you, and he sits next to you in that meeting. Jesus washed his disciples' feet that they would see it as an example and go out and do likewise, just as he did with the Last Supper of telling them to go out and remember. So no matter if you stand in a church or stand in your living room or sit at a desk at work or school, God is with you. God goes before you. He leaves behind you. 
and he's still before you and he stands next to you all the time. God is greater than we can ever imagine. For there is mystery to him. When we recite our communion liturgy, there's a moment that we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. This is indeed the mystery of faith, but sometimes there are other mysteries, like the why or the when. Why did we experience this? When will this end? But friends, no matter the mystery, God is here and God is present. So as you go about your day and your week, remember that God is holy. He stands next to you always, and therefore you stand on holy ground. And when you need him the most, he will be there. March around your own Jericho, shout for the Lord, pray to him, cry to him, whatever you need to do, for you are with God. And it's not just the pain or the sorrow that makes where we are holy ground. Susan Vreeland says this, no matter where life takes you, the place where you stand at any moment is holy ground. Love hard, and love wide, and love long, and you will find goodness in it. My friends, may we do just that. May we love hard, love wide, love long, and may we find the holy ground God gives us to stand on. So go in peace this day to serve the Lord in peace and joy, and with a holy love that fills the lands with God's grace. Let me pray for us this morning, friends. Heavenly Father, you know the needs of those around us. You know that whatever is happening in the world is crazy and unpredictable, Lord. And we ask that you just Refresh us in your grace. May we feel your peace rain down on us, and may we know that you are there, Lord. And where we stand is holy ground. Be sure to come back next week, friends, for seeing the path that God puts before us with Pastor Nico. In the meantime, I look forward to seeing you through Facebook and emails and phone calls even. Have a good day.